When I first became interested in the subjects of this Third Testament, St. Augustine, Pascal, Blake, Kierkegaard, Tolstoy and Bonhoeffer, I saw them separately as six characters in search of God. Thinking about them afterwards, it became clear to me that though they were all quintessentially men of their time, they had in common a special role to relate their time to eternity. This has to be done every so often. Otherwise, we forget that when the law of self-sufficiency proves too strong or despair too overwhelming, men need to be called back to God to rediscover humility and with it, hope. In the case of the Old Testament Jews, it was the prophets who thus called them back to God. Then came the New Testament, when through the Incarnation, God became his own prophet. Nor was even that the end of testaments and prophets. Between the fantasy of the ego and the truth of love, between the darkness of the will and the light of the imagination, there will always be a bridge and a prophetic voice calling us to cross it. So august when Rome fell, and like a later Noah, he was constrained to construct an ark, in his case called orthodoxy, wherein his church could survive through the dark days that lay ahead. Thanks largely to him, the light of the New Testament didn't go out with Rome's, remaining amidst the debris of a fallen empire to light the way to another civilization, Christendom, whose legatees we are. It was as though he'd been specially groomed for the task, tempered in the fires of his own sensuality, toughened by his arduous exploration of the age's many heresies, for instance, Manichaeism, a master of words, which, written or spoken, he offered in God's service, first asking that God would give him the wherewithal to offer. No one knows for certain what Augustine looked like, but we have the image of his time in contemporary mosaics, and the North